Welcome back to Africa This Morning. We are now on Table Talk and today we are hosting several business owners who are ready to share with us their journey even as they're in the introductory phase of doing business but they intend on expanding their business into empires. Thank you so much for joining us. We have on set familiar face, Sharon Joge, thank you so much for joining us. We'll go into your backstory so that you can give the viewers an opportunity to remember what your unique approach is when it comes to getting businesses to collaborate for the benefit of the clientele. And we have uh, Bonnie Ogo, who's the founder of Logo Leather, and Andrew Ngumba, who is a business development director for Output Solution Limited. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Backstory, Sharon, remind us what this culture is how mm -hmm. it's doing almost a year on, even mm -hmm. as we had a conversation with you when you were launching the product out. Mm -hmm. So Discoucher is essentially a book of discount vouchers. Mm -hmm. It has vouchers to different restaurants, hotels, and beauty services across Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, each voucher gives you something for free when you buy something. So if it's restaurants, mm -hmm. buy a main course, get a main course free. If it's hotels, buy two nights, get a night free. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, all the vouchers within the book are valid for the whole year, of the whole calendar year of 2016. Mm -hmm. And the individual, once they purchase this book, they for 2,000 shillings, they get over 300,000 shillings in savings. Mm -hmm. So from the last time we spoke, um, there's been a new book with over 50 more services from when we last spoke. Mm -hmm. um, and we've expanded the product to include services outside of Nairobi. So when we spoke, it was purely a Nairobi-based product, mm -hmm. whereas now we have services in Coast, in Meru, Nakuru, Naivasha. So the idea is to get um, to promote local tourism, to promote um, locals to travel around and to explore the mm -hmm. services that we have locally. How did you break the ceiling? at this point moving from Nairobi to other yeah. areas so that they can be able to understand that this is something that can be of value to the clientele and also uh, for of value to them as business owners. Yeah. I think it was quite timely especially uh, after the tourism industry went through a rough patch mm -hmm. and during that period of time it was largely the local market which sustained the tourism industry mm -hmm. so playing off of that experience that the hotels already had um, I was able to push on this notion of locals need to support local mm -hmm. establishments. And that's the whole focus with Discoucher, um, getting local Kenyans to travel, to explore establishments that are within our country mm -hmm. um, during um, holidays or vacations. Um, so playing off of that, I was able to get the hotels to understand the value of the product. Mm -hmm. um, and also for exposure, um, getting their services known and not purely outside of Kenya, but even within Kenya. Secondary way of getting themselves av advertised cheaply. Exactly. Even as we're talking about pushing your name out there, Bonnie, share with us your story. Logo leather. You're dealing with a sector that is very sensitive. When it comes to leather matters, they've been question marks, they've been ra uh, roused, they've been tussles back and forth when it comes to managing and even administering uh, administration of the leather sector in the country. Um. At the moment, the sector is uh, growing once again. It's this picking is, up. Yes, uh, this is uh, due to the government stepping in. There was a lot of uh, selling of the raw hides and skins to outside countries, mm. but now the government has increased taxes on that, so inhibiting people to sell people uh, the leather out. So it's more consumed internally in the country at the moment, and uh, the sector is growing because. Uh, the, the schools are being created again, the ones which I felt uh, had uh, gone down mm. in the early 90s. Uh, one is TPCSI, it's in Tika, so it's being brought back, new machines are being brought in, so it's going to allow new artisans to start learning the craft. Mm -hmm. yes. Even as you're talking about artisans learning the craft, what drew you to leather, even at a time when the government had not stepped in, when it was still murky? Okay, first of all, uh, I used to love shoes. Uh, still I do? Yeah, I still do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was in uh, university, I used to have a lot of shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to get a lot of uh, <laughs> comments, I love your shoes, I love your shoes. Yeah. And that uh, used to make me really want to be involved with something shoes. So I approached my father. My father was like, you know, mm. come with a business plan, finish school. So I, I did that. Then I had an opportunity to go to Ethiopia. Going there, I had it saw the leather yeah, sector, the lev the and leather I was really amazed. In Ethiopia, yeah. Yes, I was really amazed, and I said, they can do this in Kenya. So I came back and just started the research on it. took me almost a year, because I had to learn also how which leather is perfect for this. Mm. Also, I have to learn who's going to do it. So after a year, I started. But there's a lot of waste in the beginning, mm. <laughs> because you have to have that 
you have to burn a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the challenges you went through in the beginning when you're trying to get your footing right. But when it comes to innovation, you jumped into an industry without regulation. For you, Andrew, mm -hmm. you're literally working in innovation based. Yes. Working in launching off on something that we did not think was viable in the nation. Share mm -hmm. with us the backstory of Output Solutions. Well, Output Solutions is not a young company. It's been there for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's focused on sustainability. Uh, and our main solutions are, it's very broad based. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be for homeowners up until industrial level. And uh, our primary focus is uh, on reducing your emissions, mm -hmm. uh, reducing your energy consumption, and finding solutions to conserve the resources that you have, whether it be water, whether it be power. And um, we noticed uh, the biggest uh, opportunity uh, was when the Energy Regulation Commission at the time uh, decided that homeowners that use more than eight liters of water have to have solar. Um, but because of that regulation, there has been an immense amount of entrance into the market. Mm. And most of them, because of the global economy and uh, renewable energy, the prices of solar has gone down tr drastically. So you find a lot of uh, uh, countries, Germany, mm. China, mm. Russia, America, you find they're trying to flood African markets with uh, cheap Same products. Options, yeah. Um, so unfortunately, whenever you are trying to come up with a solution for someone, they assume it is the same as somebody else's. Mm -hmm. So we've had to um, innovate. In fact, we've launched a new technology, which we, uh, uh, we actually showcased at the Nairobi Homes Expo. And uh, there was immense uptake. Uh, basically, the technology heats water mm -hmm. using air. So it's something which, uh, whenever you even try to explain to somebody, mm. to them it is uh, out magic. of... magic. It, yes, yeah. it, it, is, it is like magic. Yeah. The uptake has been uh, amazing. In fact, the biggest uh, problem we've had in the past couple of months is uh, supply and demand. Mm. Yes, that is the biggest problem right now. And um, we're looking for, of course, uh, investment uh, to, of course, expand our operation because Kenya is not Nairobi. We've got 47 counties. And the beauty of uh, now the new constitution is mm -hmm. now we're creating opportunities mm -hmm. outside of the focal point of Nairobi. You've talked of the backstory, yes. identifying that output solutions has been here for 15 years. However, yes. the uptake of renewable energy, greener solutions when yes. it comes to managing how we deal with energy, be it water mm -hmm. or electricity, mm -hmm. has been on the low. Mm -hmm. Right now we're waking up to that reality. Before we discredit it as magic, mm -hmm. explain the science to us so that you can see the value of this and how viable this is mm -hmm. for every home in Kenya and Nairobi. Okay, well basically um, it works like a fridge. Uh, it has the same components as a fridge, mm -hmm. so the same compressor, the same heat exchanger, but uh, the focal point of this, uh, it's called a heat pump, mm. is, is not to cool uh, the way a fridge focuses on cooling, it focuses on heating. So um, it, uh, the beauty of it is it heats water throughout the day and at night, as opposed to solar where you only take advantage if there is sunlight, and that is only during the day. Mm -hmm. So you find with most homeowners, or rather w whichever project that you have that you need hot water, if you're only taking advantage during the day, you have to store as much as possible because uh, if I'm thinking as a homeowner, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a shower in the evening mm -hmm. and the following morning. So I have to heat up more water for the evening shower and the shower that in the morning. Mm -hmm. And um, the beauty of our technology is it's water on demand because it's constantly heating water throughout the day. If you mm -hmm. look at a the fridge, there's always it's always, it's always going to be cool as long as it's on. So that's, that's the beauty of the technology. And uh, we've done our market research. We are cheaper than solar. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a better alternative in every light and form. We'll look at how you're going to be managing the demand, which is going to be still picking up, considering that that yes. is a challenge that you are facing with right now. Yes. Even as you're talking about innovation, mm -hmm. for you, Sharon, and for you, Andrew, how have you penetrated the market? What was the navigation like? When you're walking into a market with a new idea, looking at approaching them with a new perspective on how they need to push their business out, how they need to manage their energy, even as they are going into the market? I think for me it was largely to show the problem. Mm. I think ultimately innovation is meeting an, a problem. You're solving an issue. Mm. And often either there are issues people didn't know they had or there are issues they didn't know how to address mm. in a cost-effective manner because often the solutions that are out there are costly or they're not the reasons they haven't been implemented are either cost or accessibility or for various factors. Mm. 
So with innovation, for it to be innovative and successful, you have to be meeting a need. Um, and ultimately, that was the reason. The approach. Dis yeah, the yeah. approach. Um, providing a solution to the problem. And mm -hmm. innovation is only innovative when you're meeting a prob mm -hmm. you're solving a problem and meeting a need. Mm -hmm. Um, so ultimately, that's, that's how it's Highlight able. Highlight that and you've got people coming knocking at your door. Exactly. Mm. For you, Andrew, how mm. did you get them to rethink mm. their approach on it? Because as you've indicated that mm. they assumed mm. that this was just another solution mm. like mm. any other solar solution. Well, what I will say is uh, our innovation came from the challenges of competition. Uh, just to add on, on her point, yes, you know, when, when you innovate, you have to come up with... Uh, a solution to a problem mm -hmm. otherwise there's no opportunity yeah. I'm not going to innovate just to innovate mm -hmm. uh, even if I do uh, it will not meet any uh, any any problem um, right now uh, there are over 500 companies that have been uh, that are being regulated by the Energy Regulation Commission doing what we do mm -hmm. so that means there are 500 other people doing the same thing that we're doing mm -hmm. So in, a, on, in order to come up with a... Cut your niche. Yes, cut yeah. a niche to, to come up with a, 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 a platform for us to stay alive, we have to do something totally different. So that's why we decided we're going to focus uh, on the same problem, but find better solutions uh, to meet that need. Uh, not saying the problem has changed, it's just that uh, we've seen...